Welcome to the Only Football Fans Podcast. Basically, we're a group of 10 mates, frustrated that we can't meet up in the pub every week to chat about the footy. So, we've decided to do a podcast instead. So, we're back. Episode 3. Um, the first two seem to have gone down quite well. Uh, we've had quite a few messages. I think all of us individually have had people get in touch and it's been, um, been quite good. It was a bit of a, a shock to the system when I got a message from All Leeds TV to go on their YouTube channel after two days after the podcast went live. So that was a bit, bit nerve wracking, but all seemed to go all right, boys. But um, yeah, so we go straight in. We usually go through the fixtures as in the order that they happened. But we're going to mix it up a bit tonight, purely because West Ham and the Scum are playing each other in the uh, the FA Cup in about 20 minutes. So we'll start off with Fulham West Ham with you, Strug. Um, I think this one might go for quite a while because there's the game. There weren't many talking points, but the last minute there was a, a big talking point. But over to you, Struggers. What did you? Uh, what was your takings from the game, mate? Yeah, I was going to say there weren't really much to talk about from the, the game. It weren't a classic. Uh, it's a tough, it was a tough game for us coming off the back of that that Villa game a couple of days before, which we were really good in that one, one three one, looked brilliant. And then I think on Saturday we just looked a bit tired. We looked like a team who played three games in six days, to be honest. Like Lingard was brilliant against um, against Villa, got a couple of good goals, and he just looked he just looked knackered on on Saturday. Same with Antonio. You're going and forward. We, just, we looked a bit toilet, to be fair. She didn't really have anything going forward. Loftus Cheek had his one good game of the season, turned into Yaya Torre, as he normally does against us for some reason. Um, but they just they just couldn't score. I think they had something stupid like 20 shots on goal, but only two on target. So uh, they're going to struggle to stay up with stats like that, I think. But saying that, we only had one on target compared to the 10 we had against Villa. So it's Bit of a different game uh, from the, from the Villa game, so Fulham de- Fulham deserve to win that. To be honest, they should have they should have got a couple, and I can't really moan with a point after a, after a tough week. But obviously, the, the real talking point was Suchek getting sent off, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was, it looked uh, that way, mate. It was um, like only caught bits of the game, but it seems to me as well like with Fulham, they've improved quite a lot in the last sort of couple of months, but they just lack that quality to turn draws into wins like they've done yeah. they've done quite well with stopping the rot of getting beat week in week out but I think they've got something like eight or nine draws so far yeah but they yeah. ain't going to keep them up so I think that's that's going to sort of where they're going to struggle but um, yeah I mean yeah. yeah for me after the after the Villa game we, we looked really good we, we battered them really and uh, I was going in that Fulham game thinking we're going to carry it on but yeah I think we've got such a small squad we just we can't rotate too much and Fulham worked hard. I mean, they worked really hard. They should have. They should have won. But they just haven't got anyone to score goals. I yeah, mean, that's that's uh, their problem. Mitrovic doesn't seem to be able to convert his championship form into into no, the Premier League. He's a championship league. striker all day. He'll be at Derby next season or something. Wouldn't he? <laughs> how many managers? <laughs> how many managers are going to give him a go? Do you know what I mean? He's had enough chances. I think he just don't cut his wages as well. Do you know what surprises me though? He's only twenty five. Yeah, he looks about fifty five. He's been around for years. It just seems like I thought he was like thirty at least. You know what I mean? So he went I, down like he was his last not twenty five. He went down like a sack of shit, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. He did, yeah. Well, yeah. What was your thoughts on on the whole Suchek debacle, then, mate? We put a little well, little thing on our Twitter, didn't we, at the time? But um, yeah, and I mean, it got I a few votes that else. it was a it was the right decision to get rid of him. But I think that was people trolling, to be honest. It's either that or people clicking on the wrong button, wasn't it? But and I think Matty Boyle done it just to have a laugh. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, not. I, mean, that. I did get involved for the for the J for B for that. <laughs> Sorry, lads, I didn't mean it. I think it's obvious what everyone thinks about the men, sending yeah. off. I'm sure everyone thinks the same thing. It was never a sending off, was it? I think the no, mad no. thing is, what? Why? Why Mason on the VARs even told Dean to go and have a look at it? I don't know what he's seen to make him go and have a look at it, and. Then, for Dean to go over and look at the look at the screen, watch it twenty three times, and then come back and send him off. If it's a, if it's a sending off, you ain't got to watch it twenty three times, have you? So I don't know. I don't know what he's seen or what he's thinking. I think the only thing I could think of it was a shit game, and 
Mike Dean just wanted to make it the Mike Dean show again. And the, the annoying thing is, I know I think we were talking in the group the other day, Kyle was saying that at least it didn't happen earlier and didn't affect the game too much. But when he got sent off, we had a free kick and we whipped it into the whipped it into the box. If two checks on the pitch, he might score that. And I, I wouldn't put it past him the way he's been playing recently. So it might have affected it, but we did deserve yeah. it. So Yeah, he seems to get on the end of a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> Um, yeah, oh, we brought you up there, mate. What would you reckon then? No, I was just going to say, I, I listen, Dean's getting a, a lot of the stick for it. And he should get some of it because in the day he's been over there, he looked at it, he still sent him off. But for me, it's Lee Mason's fault. There was there was no need to send Dean over there whatsoever. He, the, the fact that he's told him to go over there, I'm, I'm pointing the finger at Mason for me because I think, yeah, it's just a joke. It didn't need to. Dean, all right, he went to play his whistle, but Dean didn't send him off. Even And Dean see it. Dean see it happen, but didn't send him off. Then Mason's told him to go and have a little look at it. And I just think, yeah. I mean, I'm glad. Do you know what? In a way, I wish he weren't playing tonight. But it's the right decision for him to be, yeah, he should be playing. I'm, I'm glad it got rescinded and that. But I say, I'm, I feel a bit sorry for Dean, to be fair. Like, he's, t- he's taking the full Caroline flack for it. But um, Yeah, I don't feel sorry for him at all. I mean... No, he's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, um, yeah, he's taking the blame for it, but he's the ref, isn't he? He's the one who's given the red card. He's gone and watched it himself. So he's got a thought in his head that it's a red or whatever he's thinking of. I mean, yeah, Mason's probably the only ref that's worse than Mike Dean, I think. But the pair of them are yeah, both I'll, to blame. Yeah, Dean still, still made the decision, hasn't he? Go- Gory? Yeah, no, I was just listening to other stuff like from other people talking about that situation is MLS who obviously had like VAR and, and that quite a while ago they're not getting involved in the game so much whereas it seems like oh whoever's controlling the VAR at St George's Park just wants to get involved in the game and like the poor excuse of his 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 uh, fist was clenched I mean really d- me walking towards you with a clenched fist, does that mean I'm going to hit you? Not really. Do you know what I mean? It, it's That's just a poor excuse. Plus, like what, you know, Struggs and Kyle have said, Mason's telling, Mason's in his ear, even though that Mike Dean has, he's looked at it, he, he saw it firsthand. He's then gone and watched it, as you say, how many times? It's like, because he's got in his ear, he can't make his own decision now. And we're talking about an experienced ref. He's been refing for a long time, and and yet now he seems like they just can't make their own decision. It's just bewildering what's going on, really. And obviously, it's come it's come to light that it, it's the wrong decision all round. It's just ter- it was terrible at the time, and it it seems to get worse. Yeah, and no, I can't disagree with you, mate. I think we're all sort of in the position where it's a pretty much a landslide with the same opinion. But uh, I think everyone wants to have a. a uh, chime in on it. Um, Dave, over to you, mate. What, what do you reckon? Well, yeah, we, we're all un- unanimous on this one. And to, to be honest, with Mike Dean, even without these VAR decisions, he's he's been the same for years. He consistently gives out massively more amounts of red cards and yellow cards compared to the other refs. They're all sort of, use, they're using the same rule book, but he just seems to see things in such so much more harshly than the other the other refs. He's he's always done it. So I think he's made his bed um, in with that one. And I agree with what Gory's saying about the um, in England we seem to again interpret the rules differently to these other places. They're not having these controversies with 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 the VAR. And for me, the the best VAR has ever worked. Ironically, is was one of the first times it was ever used in the 2018 World Cup. I mean, there was a few outrages. But that was mainly because people weren't used to it. Because when they looked back at all of them decisions in that World Cup, when they boiled it down, they were pretty much the right decision every time. But since that World Cup, we seem to have just come away from... We seem to be just looking at the game differently. It just seems to be getting worse and worse. And it is particularly our country, like the way the way they're, they're viewing the rules. I think they just got it all wrong. They just seem so detached from just the people who play football, whether it's the fans or the pundits, they're looking at this guy like, how can you see that that way? And the Suchek one was just the, probably the, the worst ever, I reckon. So, I mean, yeah. something's got to be clearly. Matty, what's your opinion on it, mate? 
Um, pretty much what the other lads are saying. I don't think I can add too much to it. Maybe the fact that um, maybe they should have some independent body that looks at VAR that's not attached um, because the decisions are, that are being made are get, uh, they're wrong time and time again. And, you know, it's not the pe it's not the technology, it's the people that are using the VAR. There, there doesn't seem to be a lot of common sense with the decisions that are being made. So for me, yeah, I think obviously VAR is a massive part of the game moving forward, especially in the Premier League. Um, I just think they need to have a sit down I mean, obviously, we're three quarters of the way probably through this season already, but something needs to happen in the summer with regards to how it's used moving forward because too many teams are getting hard done by by it. That's all really I'll say. But I echo what uh, Dave's saying. Like the Suchek one was probably one of the it's pro is the worst one I've ever seen. The fact that Mitrovic has then got up and then gone to the ref like behave. He should he shouldn't be going here. Obviously, he made he made a reaction like he was being shot, like Salah generally does. But that's a that's another story. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, know what, I know what you mean. We, we, like with Mitrovic going over to him and giving his point of view as well, saying it, it shouldn't have been a red or whatever. But he's not helped himself originally by throwing himself down like he's been no, fucking shot. Uh, of so course, of course, it's, I think he's been a bit of a a hypocrite in a way to sort of take yeah. a back burner and be like, oh no, but I said, like, it, it didn't yeah, touch me, he didn't mean it. Don't yeah, fucking he wanted to, throw yourself he wanted to down be the and today. Today he's come out and he's actually put in a letter. Yeah, no, like, yeah. To the FA. So now he wants to be the hero. Yeah. It's like, but you're a hypocrite. Like, you, yeah. you've done that on, on the weekend and then now you want to save him. Did, did you sort of think that without his reaction strug, if he hadn't have gone down as he did, it probably wouldn't have even been referred as, as it was? Yeah, I was going to say that. I don't. Without that reaction, I don't even think they look at it. To be honest, do they? No, no, I don't think they do. So yeah, I, I, I'm not having that that he's gone up and gone up and told the ref that he weren't a, weren't a sending off or whatever. He, if he hadn't done that in the first place, they wouldn't have even had a decision to make. But it don't excuse Dean and, and Mason, no. but it makes Mitrovic look like a prick as well. I think they're all, all to blame for that one. It was just a bit of a shit show, really. Um, I was just going to say, I think. Dave was saying earlier about the amount of reds that Mike Dean gives out. I see a stat the other day that he's given 7% of all red cards in the Premier League since the Premier League started. Lots wow. When you think about the amount of games that's that's been played over the last 20 odd years, he's done 7% of the red cards, which is, that's, is mad. That's an, incredible, that's an incredible statistic. That's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, like, just a, not, su really. not surprising at the same time. Ellery's got to be above him, surely. David Ellery needs <laughs> to give him out for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hoppers, yeah, what, 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 you, what was your take from it mate clearly or exactly what everyone else is saying I think it's an absolute joke I'm sort of bouncing off what Boyle was saying about getting an independent panel in whether you I don't know what you boys think like you hear a lot of pundits talking about it about getting sort of people from different walk obviously you have a ref in there but sort of maybe ex-players people that actually been on the pitch getting involved in these sort of like fracas and stuff just to I don't know what you boys think about that. To, to be honest, I think that like that would only help. But I, I, like I said in our, in our um, WhatsApp group at the time, I think that the, the first point that they have to bring in is referees need to have to come out and explain their decisions. Like if, if managers and the players have to come out and explain everything that they've done on the pitch, so should the officials. I think after that game, Mike Dean should have to do a post-match interview, the same as all, all the players and the managers have to do. And then I think just by introducing that, I think these referees would sort of be more reluctant to want to be the star all the time. They love their being on the camera and all. We, we shouldn't even know Mike Dean is. I remember as a kid, I didn't even know who any referees' names were. They were just the ref. Now everyone, these refs have sort of become a celebrity to themselves. And I think mm -hmm. by doing these sort of post-match interviews and having to come out and explain themselves, it would put them back in their in their box a little bit. Because if if they make a howler like that, what, what's his excuse going to be? It's fine when they sort of go back to their their little referee meetings and come up with excuses between the ten of them, and then they put out an official excuse or an official reason as to why a decision was made. But in order to sort of 
I don't know. They just need. I think they have to either be mic'd up or explain themselves after a match. Um, what do you reckon, Boyle? Um, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. They should be made accountable for their actions. It just seems to me like they've got some bulletproof vest on when it comes to they don't have to answer to anyone, to be honest. Um, but also another point where I was going to say, do you ever think it will get to the point where it's so bad that we should start, or I say we, I mean the Premier League, they should start um, getting officials from other countries to ref Premier League games, like refs that are just not part of, I'll say, our society or English culture. You know, there's plenty of good refs that ref in Champions League finals, Europa League finals, all this declaring your allegiance about what team you support. You could be fuck. You could be lying out of your ass. How does anyone know, really, apart from the people that actually, <clears throat> unless you're active on social media? I just think there's a lot of bias towards certain teams when it comes to <laughs> certain refs. Imagine United. Where... Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they would be one of the, they would be one of the ones on the top of the list. But just say, for example, uh, you got someone in from really. Italy or Spain to ref a game. The money that the Premier League's got, it's not going to take them a lot to put them up in a hotel for a week, week and a half, pay them for the game, and then they fly back. Why not something like that? Yeah, it's not a bad call. Gory, what do you reckon, mate? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a good point. Obviously, like, you know, they they put it out there that we're the best league in the world. So why shouldn't we have the best officials in the world? Exactly. Which doesn't mean English. They could be from anywhere. But going back to like the panel thing with the ex-players now, I don't, I don't know if that will work because then it's them getting in the firing line as well. It's all interpretation. It's just the whole thing with VAR. It's, it's still coming down to someone's choice. It's, it's there to see, like the video is there to help whoever, but then it still comes down to choice. So you you might have a different view to that person. That person's going to have a different view to the next person. How they use it is it's always going to be different. I don't see how it's helping. It can help in certain situations, but the way they keep using it and the way they're just willy-nilly doing things, getting involved all the time, it's not helping. Yeah. Um, ben, have you got a point on this, mate? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I agree that it should never have been ascending off. Um, however, um, pre-VAR, there was plenty of times where decisions would be wrong, um, we've had players sent off, um, wrong identity. Um, so I feel like it's only because now we've got VAR, it's getting even more analysed, let's say. So it's a bad decision. Yeah, full stop. Um, are we all going too deep into it? Yes, because there's so much hype around the VAR now. So what I would like to see, I know Greg touched on it in the week in the chat, is really um, the communication between the ref being mic'd up so that, first of all, people on TV can hear, so we all know what's going on. I think if we all clearly know what's going on, that's half the battle. Uh, you can, you might be able to understand the refs, not necessarily in that scenario, but in other scenarios, you might be able to send, understand how the refs thinking. So it's a big one for me, the communication. That really kind of takes a lot of it away. So they're still going to get things wrong. Um, VAR should be there to back them up when they're getting wrong and, and make the right decision. In that case, it wasn't. And um, I'm glad it's been overturned. But going to the game really it's actually covered up a poor show for West Ham because everyone's talking about this red car scenario and West Ham are dropping points they're meant to be one up the top there yeah to be fair that is a good point and the whole VAR thing seems to be taking over most of the discussions you know what I mean since it's come in which is a, a bit of a shame but it's one of their sort of a work in progress isn't it with it but uh, struggles. we'll go back to you mate sort of conclude this sort of discussion on the on the West Ham game slash VAR because I don't want yeah. to sort of get tied down too much with the whole refs and the VAR thing. No, exactly. Uh, so I agree with Ben to be fair. <laughs> if we didn't have this uh, VAR thing to talk about, I probably would have been talking for about 30 seconds. That's it. Wouldn't have to fuck all to talk about because because <laughs> nothing happened. I think the only thing that we'd done, we I think we had one shot on target and hit the crossbar in the second half. We didn't deserve nothing out of it. So yeah, I was happy with the point. I just wanted to make one last point about the sending off though I was half surprised that it actually got overturned just because so I think Boyle was saying earlier the refs get a lot of protection from their own and that is it the, the refs association or whatever who, uh, whoever meets up and talks about all this shit but I, I was surprised I actually over, overturned it after they overturned one 
a couple of days earlier from him as well. So he's had two in a week, and he Dean that, uh, that have been overturned. So I was half expecting them to think, oh, we can't throw him under the bus. But uh, yeah, hopefully he won't be refing anyone for a little while. But uh, yeah, that's it. Really, weren't much to talk about during the game. So luckily there was a sending off. Yeah, no, you you probably might actually give us something to talk about, isn't it? Um, right before your uh, oh, saying that I think your game's about to kick off now, isn't it, boys? West Ham, Man United, but we're yeah, going we over, fourteen seconds in. We'll go over to you then, Jonesy, quickly to um to sort of since we last spoke, you boys have had a bit of an up and down. You had the midweek. Can we just talk about the nine nil nine nil no. victory against Southampton and yeah, then three all draw with Everton. Then. So um, yeah, over to you, mate, to sort of talk us through your thoughts through both games, really. Nine nil, silly. It was it's just one of them games we played against. All right, in the end, we was playing against nine men. Listen, it's nice to score loads of goals, but them sort of games, I don't really think. As Greg was saying when I was talking to him. They, they do take confidence from things like that. But I don't know where you can. I don't, I've, I've never taken confidence from battering teams on a Sunday or something like that. It's just it's just fun. But listen, it was a good... It's nice to, it was nice to score nine. I and mean, we haven't scored over... Last time we scored quite a few goals was against you boys. So, which is quite handy just to try and get a few more than six. But, oh well. But, yeah. Um, no, it was a... Yeah, I've, I've been. Yeah, the Southampton game. I only got a lot to say for. Really, it's just it was one of them games. Just I'll take the nine 0 and that's it. Um, back what to the Everton one, the Everton mate. Game, yeah, it's so frustrating because I actually think we played well. Going, even never, never was saying it in commentary. It's probably the best I've seen us look as a as as a sort of going forward. Like we just, it, it looked like we knew what he was doing. It wasn't like. I'll just see how it goes and whatever happens, happens. It looked like there was a plan. There was an idea behind everything going forward. But fuck me, defensively. Oh, my God. I mean, listen, I've been a bit of a a little fan of Lindelof, to be fair. Like, But, no, nah, the geezer is absolute hovis. Like, they're, they're, people have been saying it for so long about you ain't going to win a, a title with, with them at the back. And do you know what? That game... It, it really it cemented it for me. I could see we 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 ain't we ain't winning not even a title. We ain't winning. We're we're not winning nothing with them two at the back. Not not consistently anyway. We might scrape a Carabao Cup one year or whatever, but no, nah, it's it's awful. We we, we miss Bay so much, and I think Bay is a bit of an an accident waiting to happen sometimes if he's defending. But Maguire looks so much more comfortable with a bit of pace at the back there, so. Yeah, it was. It's, I said it was just, the defending was awful. It's the Hayes' fault for the goal. I mean, that's not that's not the defender's fault. Again, if Maguire could run, it'd be Andy. But <laughs> on that one, he just palmed it out to uh, the Hayes. Don't do that. He, he maybe back in the day, but he has. It was such a lazy pick. Pick. I mean, what are you doing? Just pick it. He wasn't even that. Calvert Lewin's not even put it in that hard. He could have just picked the thing up. But. I mean, yeah, it wasn't great. But I say Cavani, for me, is just class. Watching him, his movement is just second to none. It's phenomenal. His work rate. Martial and Rashford really need to take a good look at him and learn off him ASAP. I think Greenwood's slight, slowly starting to come back now, which is a bit of a touch, but still nowhere near where I want him to be. But I feel like he's uh, he is improving every game. But, yeah, just... I don't know, really. It's just so frustrating. 90, I mean, listen, I know Fergie's had loads of... We've had loads of wins on this little over the injury time. We had a free kick. Cavani won us a free kick at 94 and six seconds or whatever it was. That's game over. It's game hey, over. You, Bolton oh, over the Dover. Pipe up about that. You won a game this season after the fucking full-time whistle, so shut your mouth. Gory, over <laughs> to you. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, just going on like Cavani, what you're saying is, mate, I said it from the start, he's, a, he's an absolute signing. Like the geezer, he might be old, but there ain't a lot of strikers around like him anymore. And well, like what you've touched on, Rashford, them boys, they don't know how to play up front, mate. They're not, they're not strikers. They don't know what runs to make, when to, when to like, run the channels, when to hold the ball. They just, they literally, they work on off the cuff stuff. That's it. Whereas Cavani is a number nine. He stays in, he's in the right places all the time. The little bit of movement. He, he's suckered, who was it? Michael Keane 
with just one yeah. step. Just one step. Suck it in. He's, he's constantly thinking. He's always thinking. He just doesn't stop. Where Rashford, they, 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 they let the game pass him by after all. Like, they'll watch it. They'll wait for it to come to them. But he's, not he's constantly on the move. Yeah, he's constantly on the move. They're not strikers. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's that's all I was going to say about them. Like, why you touched on Cavani? Them, them boys ain't strikers, and they until they learn a bit of movement or a bit of savvy about actually playing up front, they won't ever. I don't think they could ever make it as strikers. Yeah, look for, from from my point of view, I, I don't think your likes of your Martial and and Rashford will ever be the level of centre forward that Edinson Cavani's been. I remember him even even years ago, mate, when he was at Palermo and then Napoli before this is like before he went to PSG and become a, a big name and a big star, and he was like bagging a goal a game nearly. Do you know what I mean? And it and these was in bang average size. This is before Napoli become a, a big hitter, and this like at Palermo they were like relegation fodder, and he's bagging like a goal a game or a goal every other game for them. He, he's He's a proper class centre forward. And even, yeah. even though you've got him now and he's, what is he, mid-30s, 35, 36? 34, I think. 34. 34 in, he's coming to the on end. Valentine's Day. Oh, there you go. Coming <laughs> coming to the end of his career. But he's um, he's still got that sort of, that movement and that know-how that someone of, of that ability has. Like, that that, that doesn't go. All, all that will, will drop off is his sort of physical attributes to sort of, do what his mind knows he, he he should be doing. You know what I mean? But he, he's still miles ahead of most centre forwards in the world, really, in his head. Yeah, I mean, I w- listen. Going back to it, I know Zlatan won trophies with us, so you can't really beat that. But for me, I actually think that Cavani is a better striker, like a better veteran striker that we've signed than than what Ibra was. I think they both brought massive things to the club, but. I think of, I don't know, I just feel like he offers he offers United more just with his movement and everything he does. Latin didn't work like he does. Latin, so I'm having, yeah, yeah I, just, I just football. love him. You didn't, play football like, you didn't play football like you're trying to do now. I think Cavani works so well. I have a day or three. <laughs> Cavani works so, like, so well at the minute because you're doing, like, you're pretty much, you're, you're doing the low block counter-attack sort of stuff. And that's suiting you at the minute. And with him working up there, that work so that Anne's just a he's a target man, isn't he? That's it. Since he's got old, he's just become a target man. But Tell him. again, he, yeah, no, I'll probably get headbutted, but <laughs> <laughs> or kung fu kicked in the head or something. Right, so Hops, what do you reckon about um the whole Cavani thing with Man United then? What, what do you reckon? Well, I was just wondering what Carl thinks, really. They're, they're, they, they keep trying to find this answer for their number nine over the years. They had the Lukaku and they tried Martial there and he's just not cutting it. Obviously, got Ibra and he was a stopgap, but obviously Cavani's only going to be a stopgap bloke like 34, like he said. I'm just thinking, who are you going to go and get next? Who's... That, that's you... it. Uh, do you know what? Again, I don't know. There's, there's obviously you got your ones you want. I want, I want, I'd love Haaland in, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. Who, He's late, mate. Who's he ain't going to you, scum <laughs> bastards. His dad will let him. He loves Ollie, mate. He loves Ollie. Yeah, all um, right. We all love Ollie. Yeah, no, obviously, yeah, Cavani is a stopgap. Um, but I, st- I honestly do genuinely believe that Cavani can play for another couple of seasons for us at a very high level. Like, he could. Be our main man for a couple of seasons. Yeah. He's fit as a fiddle. He literally, he, you know, I think he, I think he can do it. So as much as it is a stopgap, I still would like someone. But again, I feel like we need another number nine because I, I do get a bit worried when we rely too much on Martial and Rashford to play the number nine. So if anything does happen to Cavani, in fact, Gloria is our in-house uh, centre forward, mate. What's your opinion on it? I'm just going on what Carl said there about for another couple of years, but quite possibly, he, I mean, he is like fit enough as, as a player, but my, my going on to like the Arsenal fans now, I, I thought William was going to be able to do it for Arsenal, but he's got that year older and he looks like he can't do it anymore. So fitness might just leave Cavani quicker than what you think. It may do. Yeah, it may do, but, but again, and on his current you, form, you could easily plan for him for a couple of seasons. He, 
Yeah, if he can stay, if he can stay at that level. But again, it's like Willian left Chelsea at that at a level, and I thought he was going to go to Arsenal and do very well, and he he ain't got started yet. No, but, but his confidence pretty lower than a worm's tit. Well, I, again, reasons behind it may be, but going yeah. to going to Chris's point about who do you go to, I don't know. I mean, I can't no. see hard. I don't see him wanting to go to you. I don't see Mbappe wanting to go to I you. I don't see him wanting to go to you. I don't well, see him wanting to go Mbappe. to you, boys. Let's be fair, no, boys. If, ha- if Haaland comes just... to England, he's going to Man City because his dad used to play for him or he's coming to Leeds when we get in the Champions League. So, fuck yeah. Boy, what what saying, he can't wait. He What's can't that? I'm Championship Manager time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he's Leeds through and through. Born in Leeds. Bred, bred in Leeds. Leeds fan. So, just saying. Boy, would you Man City fan, isn't he? I just wanted to um, ask Kyle, do you think it was a mistake selling Lukaku, having looked back on it and what he's doing in Italy? No? Happy that no. you sold it? Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, again, listen, I've, I've spoke to many people about it. He's got, his record You is um, um, unbelievable. You can't fault what his record. But I just don't... Lo- For me, I just don't think he plays very good football. He's got touch like an absolute ball of flubber. It literally just boings <laughs> off him. Like I don't no, not well, not for me. Like I'm I feel, I feel like we've I feel like we've we have improved. Again, he was always gonna go to Italy and score goals. Always. It was it's never in doubt. And he did score goals for us. But in in times when we needed him, his his yeah, his overall play did, for us yeah. wasn't what did didn't benefit us too much, I don't think. What type but, if, if money was no object and the player wanted to come, what who would you buy it for Man United in that position? Shane Long. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what an engine. Um, <laughs> pretty, ben, pretty Benteke, to be honest. <laughs> um, um, the only one I can think of is, is Haaland. He, he, he's the... He's the, he's the Top one at the moment. Everyone in the world would want would want Erling Haaland, especially at a sixty-five million pound release clause. Which I just would exactly. So it it, it just depends through. on what the player yeah, wants. Yeah. Like Tell says, he does, that, does everyone say he want deep down he knows who he pretty would would want would wants to play for on that who, where he will go. Yeah. He does know. Of course he does. Yeah, but, but where would his agent let him go? Not to Man United because he fucking hates them. Well, let's say exactly, yeah. well, 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 when Man United Dortmund. put ten million pounds in his pocket, he go, all right, yeah, go on and sign. He, he does it. He, he does. Every, he does. Yeah, he does it all for money. That oh, fat git. But <laughs> you know, the amount of times he's made money just on the, off the whole Pogba thing. They're both pretty making money out. Of, they've both made so much money at United just in what they say and what they do. So, but no, I think uh, if you get back to Ball's question, it's Harlan. That's the only one I can really think of that I would say. Do you know what? Go out and get me him. Lewandowski is getting on a bit, still class, but again, I don't, I don't, I don't think. I think we've got more chance of getting Haaland than Lewandowski, to be fair. Yeah, probably. Um, you've again, you've got you've got your good ones. You've got your little, your, your you know, Martinez is from Inter, who's who's talked yeah. about and things like that. But again, I don't know what he would be like. You know, it, it would be a bit of a gamble. I feel like with him, but for whereas Haaland, I feel like for a club like Man United, do you buy someone who's a seasoned pro? Record at doing it at the top level, or do you buy the the young pretender, the new kid on? The I don't court? think we can the buy young. Court. I think we have to buy proven. And again, yeah. do you know what? For I, me, you've got I to go for Harry Kane. Go yeah, Harry Kane. I'm not even thought about him. Yeah, but I don't think Kane would come. But if he's why? Played, what's he going to win at Tottenham? That, yeah. No, but that geezer had so. I, I reckon that geezer could have left this summer just gone. He could have probably left the summer before that, but he keeps staying. He Harry, needs to Harry Kane. Do you know what? Yeah, do you know what? I can't Harry even Kane, think about him. Kane Would love in, him at United. He's danger of becoming Alan Shearer part two. All the ability in the world and winning fuck all. If Kane doesn't, yeah. at least Shearer won a Premier League though. I, yeah. I see Kane going. Oh yeah, sorry, he did win the Premier League with Blackburn, but Kane is not going to win anything at Spurs. That's no. evident. I'm not just saying that because I'm an Arsenal fan. He, he ain't winning nothing at Tottenham. I'm sorry. Yeah. If, no, if he was going to win like, Tottenham, he'd have won it by now. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wish Far- I wish Fardy was ten years younger. He'd be my, he'd be you know playing how he is now again. A player, I'd, I'd do anything to take years off that kid. But he's not. Every time he plays against us, 
he's 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 top well most most strikers do these days but yeah he he's top draw Vardy what a player would it be yeah, worth going in for someone like a Calvert Lewin mate no <laughs> no do no? you know what I've I've got him in my dream team I have fancied him for a few years not, not just because he's good looking Ooh, I, know, he's good looking <laughs> <laughs> I mean he's a good looking boy um, <laughs> Bamford, no, I just don't, don't think. Don't you dare bring up Bamford with that scum <laughs> set of fucks. You know what? Again, Not a chance. I, love, I just love that man's interviews. Bloody. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he's just. I just love. He's just. He's just a legend. What a lovely guy. But you know get his what? name out of your mouth, mate. It ain't happening. Uh, who, who was the name before that? Right, who said before that? Who was we talking about before? Calvert Lewin. Bamford. Calvert Lewin. That was it. I like him. I think he's prolific enough for us. I don't know. I don't know. Fucking hell, you, you boys at this rate, you're just going to go and get Miroslav closer or say, oh, he's got goals in him. Fucking hell, you love an OAP centre no, forward because he's got I, a proven record. I, I reckon maybe maybe they've got a plan for Greenwood to go there. We've got a couple of, we've got a couple of young kids as well bursting. We, we, we've, got that, we've got a couple of young ones coming through who are scoring goals of fun. Again, I know it's at kiddies level, but I don't know. I, I don't actually see Greenwood as a centre forward. I'll be honest with no, you. I think he's flat. Forward. I think the position. I don't think he's tall enough or big enough to do that. All that, that you know, that hold up play and all that sort of stuff. But I like him in from the right. I think that's going to be his position. But they seem to think they they seem to think he he will become a number nine. Mm. And they see a lot more of him than I do. So, do you reckon he's got that in the locker, Gory? Who Greenwood? Yeah. No, no. I, I was just. I was just about to say, like you're looking at you're looking at football changing nowadays. The actual number nine of, of old, and like Cavani's probably one of the last ones there. They're dying out, mate. Like you're looking at now wingers as your strikers. A lot of teams, you know, like what you're trying to do. You're trying to get Greenwood. You're trying to get Rashford to to be your number nines. They're not. They've never been. Never have been. And there's a lot of teams that do it, you know, and and they're struggling to find them. Number nines are dying out because of the way the football's going now. It's just so athletic. It's so in behind. Yeah. No one wants to play feet. Yeah. No one wants to. Pace. No one wants to do that no more. It is true. They they they, they like movement as well, don't they? They, they like that sort of, they, they like people to move in and out, not stuck to a position. They like people to yeah. move across, yeah. move back. Yeah. Rotate four, four, two. Your average four four two of two strikers and that is, is gone now. Football's evolved. Yeah. It's, it's not that anymore. So yeah. your strikers are your strikers are a different. They're a different breed now. Struggle, do you reckon, mate? Now. Yeah, I might. I might go right. Like West Ham, we don't even own a striker anymore. We just got <laughs> seventy two wingers. You're doing all right. Got, You're doing all right though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we had Haller up front, he was a proper. Lump number nine, wouldn't he? And we just didn't, it didn't work. He didn't suit us at all. The way we play is on the break, nice and quick down the wings and two wingers cutting inside, someone floating in the middle. Unfortunately, at the moment, we've got Yarmolenko floating in the middle. He don't do fuck all. I'm not having him at all. But yeah, I mean, saying that though, I'd like oh, us yeah. to, we're in a different position than Man United. We can't go out and buy the, the complete article, whereas they need to. But for us, I think in the summer, we need to be looking at that uh, Brentford forward, Ivan Tony. I think it'd be perfect for Yeah, us. I was just yeah. about to Good say about him. He's, he's Ollie Watkins part two, isn't he, old yeah. Uh, yeah. Tony? He definitely looks think, like he's quite a big uh, 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 Premier League level from what I've seen of him. I, think if I actually think he's mid, got more to club, his game than Watkins. Mm. I think if you're a sort of a mid-table club and you're you're after a decent player, just go and raid Brentford, to be fair, because they're just churning yeah. them out. Yeah, yeah, they seem to churn them out, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, they do bring a fucking player, mate. They've got a, a brilliant recruitment system. It just works year after year. They lose their, yeah. their best players every season and replace them, and it doesn't seem to weaken yeah, them. They seem to replace like for like in yeah. the batting positions, especially. Um, yeah. Right, well, I think that will sort of... Will bring I'm just going to say close. one thing. Oh, go on, mate. So just one last thing about... that. I did, I did know. I'll tell you what, this season for me as well, Scott McTominay is turning into a top player for us. Very important for me. I reckon he's one of the first names on the team sheet. He's still shit, though. I, I actually think he could go on to. Ca- I don't think he is. 
Scotland's finest. That's not us. He's not even no, a fucking cool. left back. How can he be a good Scottish player? <laughs> <laughs> nah, He's got nah. a great left foot, though. Now, for me, do you know what? I actually see that. I actually see him captain in United one day. I honestly do. Like, I think. I think he's our... Um, is he better than the original I mean, Fletch? Enforcer. Is he better than Fletch? Yeah, he's better than Fletch. Ooh. Yeah. At least his arse fell Fletch. out of him like Fletcher's did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Um, uh, yeah, Scotty McSauce, he's better than, better than Fletch. And I, I, I think, I say, he just drives us forward. He's busy in there. Box to box, tackles, scores goals. He scored a couple, a lovely couple at Old Trafford earlier on this season. I can't remember who's against. No, him. I can't remember. Early that either, as well. <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we're definitely cut that, <laughs> cut that short now, Jonesy. You scum cunt. <laughs> um, yeah, you've had enough say, mate. So we're, we're going to move on now. We're going to go over to uh, Boyle and DS. We're missing Spearsy today, but we're going to go over to the Gooners. So um, this could be fun, boys. Since we've uh, since we last sort of met up, you've had um, a bit of an indifferent indifferent run. What's your take on the last two games? Well, <laughs> where to start, Dave? <laughs> eh? um, <laughs> what a time, boys! Uh, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> So if um, you want me to talk you through it, Dave, you lost two one to Wolves, yeah, and uh, and then you've lost one 0 to Villa. So um... I, I just managed to erase it from my memory. To be fair, it's just, oh, do you know what the with with the Wolves game? <laughs> to, to be fair, the first half hour was probably the, the best we played all year. It was uh, we was playing all right. The ball was Partey was looking unreal. The ball was pinging around between the forwards. Got a performance out of Pepe. He scored a good goal. We rattled the post, the crossbar. Had a goal ruled out rightly, but it was a tight one. With VAR, we, I thought we was going to ruin him. Seriously, I thought we was going to destroy him. But then... Rattled more than Hugh Hefner in that first. But, uh... <laughs> you know it. <laughs> but, but then, obviously, they, they, they got a foothold and sort of just stopped the rot. And um, then... Towards the end of the first half, it, you could just feel something was just going to happen. And when it got to the 40, 47th minute, there was two minutes of injury time. And I'm thinking, OK, yeah, good half, blow the whistle. But it, it, the rest decided to continue the game for another 20 seconds and just let a, a, an attack develop. And then obviously, there you go. You, the rest is history. David Luiz, at first, I thought it was another classic from David Luiz. But then on the, on the, on the replay, it was... It was he was unlucky. He was trying to stay out of the way, and then as the players, whether he's got the longest stride in the world, finding <laughs> his foot back for a shot, his foot has come back and touched Louise so slightly, and he's gone down. And yeah, it's a, it's a it's, it's stopped to whatever it's an accident or no accident. The guy's about to score a goal, so it's penalty hundred percent. But to to be sent off for that was just so harsh. And if yeah, so hanging on the fact that there was no attempt made for the ball. That's why it's a red. But I'm maintaining there was there was no attempt of nothing. He, he didn't attempt anything. Do you know what I mean? He, the, the other attacking player made contact with him. And to to be banned for three games for that is just out of order. Like, I mean, that geezer who karate kicked, the Crip Palace player who karate kicked McTominay is going to get the same amount of ban. Southampton player. Southampton player, sorry, yeah. Wayne Al Yankovic. Yeah. He, he's going to get the same <laughs> ban as, as Louise for that. It's just, just crazy. And then obviously we come out in the second... To be honest, we were playing well in that game and we come out in the second half and I still fancied us to nick something, even with 10. But then four minutes in, Matinho scores fucking goal of the month. <laughs> Kings it, top bins, posting in. G- game over. But then even... Oh, taking the, uh, the very small positives, I can say at least we didn't collapse to like a nine-nil defeat or anything with 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 nine men on the pitch for most of the second half. They it was they kept it a respectable scoreline, two-one. Um, but yeah, I, I was hoping. I thought right, that's that we played well there. That's one of those games where the circumstances made us lo- lose, not not particularly a bad performance. So I was interested to see how we reacted against 
Villa. And how do you think you reacted? Yeah. <laughs> it was just fl- just flat, really. Like they, they, sloppy play, let them score a goal. And they just didn't... You, you just never really felt like they were going to come back and win win that game. I mean, Villa, they had a lot of players who played well. Um, Mings was unbelievable at the back, to be honest, in that game. He, he, I think he secured them the points. Grealish was his usual self. Watkins had a good performance. Just as soon as they got that goal, they could just play there exactly how they want to play, sitting back on the counter attack. And um, you know, we had we had moments, um, but they they were stopped by good defending, to be honest. And there's a few things that are a little unlucky, like Pepe put a ball in between the keeper and the the defender, which could have gone anywhere. Somehow Mings has hooked his foot back and got it out. Another day that would have been an own goal. But, I mean, their goal, we blocked it and it deflected in. Anytime we had something blocked, it just was nowhere near going. And it's just nothing really went for us. Even there was yeah. a shout, penalty, which was which was soft, but nonetheless, the Martinez, when they when you examine the replay, he's, he's grabbed hold of Lacazette and... And, and dragged him towards him. I mean, I wouldn't, don't think I'd really expect to be given that, but I mean, there's just, with some of the decisions you're seeing from these refs and how they're looking at certain things under a microscope and coming out with some of these outrageous decisions, I was thinking, oh, <laughs> please, is it our chance for an outrageous decision in a pen? But nah. Yeah, um, it's one of them, just, isn't it? Yeah, just, we're just not having really anything, anything go for us really at the minute. So, yeah, it's just disappointing. Disappointing. And, um, I was hoping that with the good little bit of form we've had recently, it was we, we'd had our blip. Now we're back on good form, but I mean, now it looks like the good form was the blip. The blip and, and the, <laughs> the main form is just shit. So, um, you found your form again. <laughs> we found our form. Yeah. Um, well, you sound back to what we do best. <laughs> you sound completely fucking deflated about it, mate. And I know, yeah. I know Boyle feels equally. Um, <laughs> Equally as excited about it. So, uh, Matty, thoughts on the the past two games, mate? What, what do you reckon? I really promised that I'm not. I wasn't going to get stressed talking about this, but I'm, I can feel myself <laughs> getting angry, and I've only just started talking. Um, yeah, I mean, the Wolves game. It reminded me a bit of Arsenal of old, even when we had invincible sides. We'd have to batter a side for 45 minutes to go in with a one nil lead sometimes, and like Dave said. First half hour, I think I agree with him. That's the best we've played in a long time. You know, Saka rattled the woodwork in the first couple of minutes. Party was pinging it about and it all looked like it was going well. Um, got the goal and again, slaughtered Nicolas Pepe on the previous uh, podcast, but he actually did relatively, uh, relatively well. There's definitely a player in there in Pepe, but he's still so raw. I don't know if he knows what he... What is required of him sometimes, he looks a bit lazy, but I give him his due. Last couple of performances, I thought he's played well. Well, by the Villa game. Uh, Wolves and Southampton, he played well. But um, going back to the David Luiz situation as well, he's not even tried to foul him. He's tried to get out of the way of anything else. And I definitely think David Luiz's reputation has preceded him there when it's gone to the decision. Because he was just straight off. There weren't even no negotiation. He was he was gone. And obviously, they score the penalty. They're going at 1-1 half time, got the tails up, and they're ready to come out for the second half. But even with 10 men again, I thought we still had a result in us. And I can't slaughter Burnt Leno because he's been absolutely tremendous. But I forgot to even what mention that. What, I mean, any of you lads can <clears throat> kind of tell me what he was doing there? Because... Did he come to catch it and realise, oh shit, I'm ten yards outside the box or what? I think the skip on the the, the skip of the ball took him by surprise. Did he, think he was fucking Carl Lewis, fucking <laughs> jumping out the box, and then nah, just that was just. I don't even know how I left it on after that. I was in I was in pieces still from the David Luiz red card, let alone you know, getting sent off. Not bitter, man. <laughs> but no, nah, I was I was fuck, I was absolutely gutted. I was gutted because I knew them two games. Looking at the fixtures, the next three fixtures that we got, I was thinking, right, points feel here. We could pick up something here, especially after West Ham went to Villa Park and absolutely dismantled them. 
I thought we, we would probably get something out of that game. But to not walk out of those two games with zero points, we're just back to what we started before the sort of seven-game unbeaten run, back to the nonsense. Even little things like Thomas Partey hasn't been injured in four years at Atletico Madrid. He comes to Arsenal and he's like fucking oxide and neutrino bound for the reload. He's all casualtyed up. He's been injured fucking four times. I can't believe it. <laughs> that is a well, fucking no, phenomenal no, reference, no, Boyle. It's just unbelievable, mate. It's just I could I could go on all day, but I don't want to talk for longer than KJ and ruin it for everyone. But fuck he lasts more than twenty one seconds, or <laughs> oh, struggles. What's your thoughts on it, mate? It. Well, I, I haven't really got much input into Arsenal as such because I sort of don't. I, Concentrate on the top six now. I don't really concern myself with the bottom half of the table. But <laughs> oh, I must a say, I'm a bit disappointed with your your reactions because I was expecting it to be like full on Arsenal fan TV rant, and you've been so shit you can't even bother to speak about Arsenal. We have to uh, try and coax it out. I'm trying to get away from the the Arsenal fan TV thing, mate. I don't I ain't associated you, with that. You didn't even throw one blood clot or fam in there. <laughs> yeah, we, we we could do, but we're gonna we're gonna avoid we're gonna avoid that situation. We? <laughs> we might get a few more subscribers. It seems to work for them. Well, you know, there's other strings to the bow. Without uh, we'll, get, we'll get you some Arsenal headphones, boy. You can you can wear them. And a, and a red. Spears and a red, has got some. Uh, I think yeah. the reason Spears he hasn't joined us tonight is basically he he feels worse than you two. I think he just he genuinely yeah. bothered to contribute. <laughs> Uh, ben, what, what do you reckon on it, mate? You must be enjoying it as a Chelsea fan. Oh, do you know what? I'm I'm loving it because um, if we was in this, their shoes, we'd be getting a lot of stick, and probably rightly so because obviously we we got bigger ambitions than them. And we spend money, but um, realistically, <laughs> um, Dave and Matty, there some good points, but generally it's about luck and injury, there, boys. Bottom line is Arsenal ain't been good enough, have they? No. So uh, I want to know from you, boys, like what what are your expectations for the season? Well, sad, sadly, I think finishing in the top half of the league has got to be a realistic <laughs> expectation. And you might laugh at that, but yep. it's going. <laughs> Every team around us has got games in hand. If they win their games in hand, we're, 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 going, we're, we're going back towards a, like the, the bottom half of the table. Obviously, the, bo- the bottom three, mathematically, I don't think they're going to get out of it. So, you know, we'll be safe from the fucking relegation aspect. <laughs> but... The, re- the, the, recruit- the recruitment process is a lot to be desired. I wanted to ask Dave, does he think, do you think Arteta has a lot to blame with regards to Arsenal's position in the table? Because as a manager, he's got to carry the can, I suppose, at the end of the day. But I don't think his team... Sele- I, I, some- I can't really question his team selection at times. Um, I, just, I just don't think... We're, we're just not good enough. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I think I think we're still struggling with a lack of quality with some of the players. Like I was, I've never been so happy with a transfer window to see people going. You know what I mean? We need yeah, to just yeah, of course. This, this this shit out. I mean, a few, I remember a few years back when when Bayern Munich did like this cleansing. They just like chucked out like a load of this, these players they they didn't yeah. want or need. And then a couple of years later, they just came back bigger and better. And I think we we're, we're still. I mean. There's certain players who like, hold in like look decent. Bayern Munich, huh? I like to be as half as good as Bayern Munich, huh? Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bad. You'd like to be as good as fucking Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, they. I mean, players like Holding, they they look good in certain game situations. Like in, on the run, we, a lot of the games we when we end up in front and we've got something to defend, and he's dealing with balls being swung in the box, heading away, stuff like that. He's, he's pretty good. But then you see games when he gets counter-attacked and he's backing off, backing off. He just seems to not have the awareness to know the angle to, to place himself, to cut off that through ball behind him. He seems to get his feet in a in a muddle and then people just, just burn past him. Um, so, I mean, he, he is like a, he's like your backup defender. We should have someone better than him starting. In, and, in, in fairness, I... I in, I would, the jury was proper out on holding, but having watched him quite a few times, I don't think he's been the engineer of our downfall from a defensive point of view. Every time we concede a goal, or eight times out of ten, 
if you're undone by a, uh, a class bit of play, sometimes you just got to hold your hands up and say you were outdone there. Arsenal are the creation of their own downfall time and time and time again. Yeah. Against Aston Villa, Cedric's given some lazy ball away. They've put the ball in the box. Watkins, has, he's, he's scuffed it. It's hit holding and it's gone in. It's a lucky goal. Matt Ryan made some very good... I was quite impressed with him, to be honest. I thought he made some good saves in the game. If it weren't for him, it could have been even worse. But I, I just don't know where we go from here. The balance in midfield looks wrong. I don't know if he can play Partey and Jacker together. Um, well, Partey, that'll be him out for another six games now because he's he's played 190 minutes, so he's due another five yeah. games out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, what, what I'm getting at... Saying, I don't want to jump on the bandwagon, but... Arsenal just don't look the same side without Tierney. How can a left back be your best player? A Bamiang as a captain is an absolute fucking disgrace. He's no more of a captain. How is he captain? Please yeah. tell me. All right, he's a striker and he scores loads of goals. That doesn't make you a captain. Have you ever seen <laughs> him anymore. Have you ever seen him shout <laughs> at a player on the pitch? Have you ever seen him get pissed off with one of his teammates when they're losing? Not once. Not once. I don't think I don't think many of them do. He's never. Arsenal. That's always been a problem. Lack never. of leaders. Never. As an outsider looking in, then Jonesy, would you reckon looking at Arsenal? But no one. Proper bunch of has beens, mate. Proper bunch. But um, no, nah, we're we're in a similar boat to them too. Fair. I think we're just as much. We're just been a bit lucky. Good. No, but we've been lucky. We no. I know we're. I know we're a lot further up. I know we can barely see each other in the league. I know that. But I'm just saying. We're both not great, are we? We're just having a... We, I think we've had, a, like I said in the last podcast, I think we've just done a lot of luck along the way just put us where we are. It's a bit unrealistic where we are. But, yeah, I, but I, not, I wanted to say not, something. You're, that David not lucky look, over, you're not lucky over 21, 22 games. You are where you are. It's as simple as that. You might, even if you, even if you win game right, one, Fuck him off. He's had enough air time with these scum bastards yeah. anyway. What I was saying was, I wanted to say about, go back to the David Luiz thing, right? For me, that red card should have been rescinded anyway. But did I hear it right that if he'd have gone in for a challenge and tried to win the ball, it wouldn't have been a red card, no matter if he fouled him? Yeah, that's they brought, right. Yeah. They, they, brought they, they spoke in. to the ref. I believe you're right. Yeah. It's the double jeopardy right. rule. It used to only apply yeah. to goalkeepers, which would mean that basically the goalkeepers wouldn't be punished twice because they'd give away a penalty. Like it's harsh to send them off as well, but they've since expanded it so it's any outfield player. So if David Luiz has kicked lumps out of him as he ran past him, he'd have got a yellow card. Yeah, that that, that for me is an absolute joke. To be fair, bollocks. So for trying to get out of the way, you get sent off anyway. Yeah, all it will lead to is managers telling them if if you're unsure, just just, just them. fucking scythe them down, mate. You're not going to go. No, that that. That for me is fucking stupid. I get, I get the double jeopardy thing, but nah, that just does not make sense to me. So you, yeah, you're getting, you're getting punished for trying to do right. He's trying, exactly. to, he's trying to stop it. Greg, and that's, they, that's where the refs be... need to use a bit of interpretation and not stick to the rule. Like they get so obsessed with sticking to the letter of the law that they they miss the point. And they should be. That's where you need to be using the interpretation to think that. Okay, there's no attempt for the ball. Oh, that leaves me with no choice but sending off. You're like, well, yes, it it's does. a common sense decision. It's you just, common sense. Yeah, you, it's a it's a common sense decision for people that have played football. These referees haven't. Exactly. Yeah. That all they're doing is reading a rule book and sticking to it. I was just about to come in and say that too. Saying that a lot of people's gripe is when when these refs make decisions. How many times have you heard people that have played football, watched football? Supported football, ref. Have you even have you played football yourself? Stuff like that, like, because they seem to make decisions. Yes, they know the rule. They might know the rule, but it, in their head, common sense. If you know that David Luiz is trying to get out of the way, how is that ever a red card? But yet, if he was to swipe the player, it's okay as well. That's. If he swipes him, he is trying to hurt the player. He's trying to get the player. That's a red. Yeah. How you can say that's a yellow is beyond me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if if you're looking at it fast time and he's putting his hands up, he's putting his hands up and he clips his geezer's ankle, like his, his, his foot with his knee. And yet 
he gets sent off. It is it's crazy. Some of the stuff going on is crazy. But yet they can go back to the monitor. They can go back to the monitor and see this stuff. Well, from the, like, from like the, I said, Greg, it, going back to the monitor doesn't matter to these people because if if that is a rule, then they just go, well, that's in that's in the rules. Yeah, that's, right. It's a red exactly. card. Like, that, that they don't take into there. account the, the posi- being in that position themselves because they never have. Never have. I oh, know, I know. And this is what's, how they can officiate games without even having the knowledge. Yeah, it's but wrong, it's isn't it? Wrong. But that, that's but where we're at. That- from we're that pushing. decision, that's cost us. That's cost us the game. Hundred percent. That was three we, we points in the bag. In, that game. We didn't cruise control until that incident happened. Didn't happen. yeah. It didn't even look. Yeah. Like, it didn't even look like. Well, we'll we'll um we'll bring the Arsenal discussion to to a close anyway, boys, um and we'll move on to the to the next fixture. Right. So the next game was uh over to you, Greg, which for. <laughs> uh, Title contention ender, really, for you boys, mate. Liverpool losing 4 1 to City. Um, and well, since we last spoke, you've lost to Brighton and Man City. So, what's the uh, what's the faults, mate? Yeah, we've we've had a, as bad a week as Arsenal, to be honest. Um, worse, really. <laughs> All right, mate, fucking hell, you kick us <laughs> while we're down. <laughs> um, Oh, what can I say? I mean, it's, you know, the Brighton game was typical team. They come and sat in. They've done well. They have done well. Like, you cannot say anything about them. They they came to they came to give it to us and they done a number. They had the low block. We couldn't get through them because, our, once again, the movement is just non-existent. Against them, it was non-existent. It was very... Very laboured first half. And then we, uh, when they scored, we was actually having a good period, which was the only one in the, in the game, I would say, where we was actually having a good period. And then they went and scored. But, yeah, it's just non-existent at the minute. Like, it's just not there. Um, it's hard. It's, we had a good week. The previous week, we had a good week. Do you know what I mean? We had two wins and you're kind of thinking... Yeah, that's gone. You know, You're on about these last two. No, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Always living in the past. You come, you come to this week and you're thinking off the back of two wins, hopefully the form would pick, like pick up and that. And then obviously that happened at Brighton and then it's not looking good for the Man City game. It wasn't looking good for the Man City game off of the back of that. And then um, what can you say about the City game? I mean... <laughs> it is, well, look, it's, it's horrible. The, the, uh, the result apart, do, do you do you reckon that is title over now for you? Oh, yeah, hundred percent. I think it's it's the fact that we've lost the ten point gap anyway. It show we we obviously done we we were doing well to even be where we were, and then all, all of a sudden it's kind of like derailed a bit, isn't it? And you know. Everyone's picking up on it, yes, because we're the champions. And what Roy Keane said, it's, it is true. But, you know, City City lost nine games last year. We're, we were so good, obviously, last year. They didn't have a good They didn't have a good year. They lost nine games. We've lost five already now. And I can probably see us losing about the same as what they had last year. Do you know what I mean? Another four or five games. But towards the actual game of, you know... We got let off. We got let off with the penalty miss. Sterling's absolutely had Alexander Arnold on toast there, bruv. Like he has literally killed him, um, and he pretty much had him all game defensively. Is but once they missed, you know, like we were still in it a little bit, and we were lucky to be in it. But as soon as yeah, as soon as they they get that early goal in in the second half and that, um, and then obviously. Ali does what he does. He's been class for us, and you know everyone. He's been tipped as up there as like best keeper in the world, which he is. Them two mistakes don't mean he ain't, but they were just they were comical. I don't know what was going on, and it goes from a two-one game to a four-one game. But that's what can happen, and they they deserved it anyway. But again, the the geezer 
Foden is a magician. He's just a new, he's just a new version of Silver. Maybe he's a magnificent now. player, isn't he? Yeah, and uh, I, you know, I yeah, I love Liverpool, but I'm a supporter of football, and you just got to hold your hands up there. That the geezer is class, even if he plays for Man City, whoever he, whoever he would play for, you just got he, the geezer is he's he is the best Englishman I would say since Rooney. What about Patrick Bamford? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, since, see if, since we'll see if we can get in the English squad first, eh? But... <laughs> um, no, KJ, like, talking so... of Gory being a fan of football, that's your fucking line, isn't it? You, he has you stole my line. 28 football shirts in your, in your, in your um, wardrobe. <laughs> Who is it? Uh, what, what do you I reckon then, mate? Three clubs. I'm central to everything. Now, I was going to say to Gory, like, does your... Your goal scoring does that does that worry you? Because I'll be honest here, apart from cheating from your penalty on <laughs> against City, I actually don't. From watching the game, you didn't like you was going to score. You literally. And again, when you got back to one one, I thought mm, maybe. But then you just there was nothing after that. It's just like I mean, you scored one goal at home. I think it is or something like this year. We're in February. Yeah. Oh, it, again, no. It is worrying because. For, for quite a while now, as much as Bobby, has, uh, he, he's been an absolute servant for us, but we've known, yes, he feeds he, he feeds Mane and Salah, yeah, but he doesn't do enough himself for goals, goals-wise. For the team, he does enough, but goals-wise, he's not your number nine, like, that scores goals, you know? Like, and we've been talking about trying to replace, well, I would say a lot, a lot of fans, I wouldn't say as a club we have been talking about it, but I'd say a lot of fans' views is he's the one that would go or he would come out of the first 11. I'm not saying go from Liverpool because I don't want him to go, but I was, he would be the one that comes out and possibly we could get someone, a, a vocal point up there that's going to score goals to help Salah and, and Mane. Who? Hey. But... Well, again, who you it's who you're talking about? Like, who else do you go for apart from trying to get Mbappe or Haaland? When you're when you're when you're at a level like what we're trying to be at, like, and obviously coming off the back of, that's all you can sort of talk about is the best players in the world. Yeah, there's not who that many about, is there? So it's, it's finding them, mate. Um, yeah, of course, and it's and it's enticing them to come to you as well, but. I mean, yeah, like it is worrying, but that's it's, it's a lack of the fluidity has gone, the movement like of the players. It's it's like they're just they're not doing it no more. Like they don't the link up everything. It seems to just be off at the minute. It's not something ain't right. And the only the only people that can sort it is obviously Klopp and the players. But it's not it's not looking good at the minute at all. You don't know where you don't even know where the next wins. Like you know you're looking at fixtures. And you're thinking, oh yeah, points. Maybe we can pick up. Now we've gone from having that record of like smashing people at home, and now you're like, where's the next win actually coming from? Well, that's no, it, mate. You've lost three straight at home now. It's it's and Leicester coming up next. Not the easiest. Um, Ooh, Strug, what's your opinion? It's just nice to see Klopp taking it so well. Great <laughs> <laughs> in defeat, isn't he? It's funny, when he first came over in the first few years, he was like this happy-go-lucky German. And now he's just losing it, isn't he? Biting everyone's head off who dares to ask him a question. I Personally, I think if it gets much worse, I can see him, see him walking. Christopher. I can as well, to be fair. For like, I, I've been a big fan of him last couple of seasons. Last, well, three, four seasons. I mean, he's been a breath of fresh air. But... He's been such a sour cunt all season, man. Like, loads of other teams have had big problems and injury-wise and decisions go against them. Like, Leeds being an example, we've got fucking injuries galore and we've got a, a Fred Bear squad as it is and Bielsa's never once mentioned it. Klopp fucking says it every other sentence. It's like, Christ, mate, all right, we get it. You've, you, Van Dyke's injured, yeah? We know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bielsa, he can't, Bielsa can't tell his interpreter what to say, obviously. Oh, Bielsa can speak English, mate. He just don't like doing the press. <laughs> he don't like making a mug of himself like Klopp does. No, I don't know, mate. <laughs> Hoppers, well, what do you reckon? Mate, I, going I, back, I was going back on the, what Stroh was talking about, Klopp sort of 
getting on the edge of his seat a bit because obviously being a Chelsea fan, we had Mourinho twice and you knew when he was coming, not to an end as such, but when people were getting under his skin, you had excuses every week when we were losing or not playing well. It was always someone else's fault and I'll never see it from Klopp up until now over the years, but he started, like Strug said, he's buying a people. He's had to go at two reporters in that one, that I've heard on Twitter and stuff in that one game. He's coming up with excuses about when City had COVID, that they had a break, and that that's the reason that they're doing so well. And something I know it, what Keane said about being tongue in cheek, he's saying about Alisson had cold feet. I mean, <laughs> just taking a piss now. Yeah, but I think that is that is tongue in cheek, but I reckon obviously that comes across very different being a like a foreigner yeah. to how we would say it. But it is a silly comment, obviously. And I think he is, he is, he's bitter at the minute. Like, you know, it's, it's not going our way and it is horrible being champions and, and performing like this. Like not, you know, I've said before, obviously like only three teams have, have ever retained the title. And obviously them teams have to be special to do what they're doing. Chelsea, Chelsea, City and United. Have only ever done it, nice. and um, yeah, they've got to be special. Them teams that have done it had to be special, and you know, take away the injuries. Yes, it's a big thing. If we had had our team, maybe we might have been able to to match City, but it hasn't been, and we've just got to deal with it at the minute. It is what it is. We are now only battling for top four, and it's very touch and go whether we're ever going to get that. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a tough a tough ask, even the top four, because there's quite a lot of decent sides that are battling it for that this season, mate. It's going to be... Um, yeah, if we don't um, turn it around quick, which obviously they are capable, but oh, of course something, they are. something's got to click. And, I think your, you next, your next two games are going to be vital for the, the rest of your season. You've got Leicester and Everton next two. And I think they they pretty much could make or break where you're going to be, if you if you if you just, if you go and win both of them, you, you you're going to be a top four side. If you don't, if you lose one or even both, or only come out with one point or something out of them two, all of a sudden they're two of the teams that are, are going to be battling you for the top four. You know what I mean? And yeah, I don't know. Mate. It's going to be one of them, man. They are um, massive games coming up, and especially with obviously the like you know the Rogers connection. The Merseyside derby, like they are two massive games. They are, yeah, no doubt. They will be up for it. They will be up for it, and we we've got to pick ourselves up off the floor, mate, because that's where we are at the minute. Do you know what I mean? Well, we'll um, we'll we'll draw a line under it, mate. Put you out of your misery, and hope that next Thank time you. we um <laughs> <laughs> we record you, you've come in with some better results. Eh? But, I don't, uh, I hope so, mate. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> well, um. The next one, anyway, boys, is um, the Mighty Blades in the bottom three took on uh, Hoppers and Ben's beloved Chelsea. So, um, yeah, take us through it. Ops, if you, you start us off, mate. Yeah, well, after um, Werner, I gave him a lot of stick last week, didn't I, and Donkey had a week and stuff. He, it, I know he's only Sheffield United and stuff, but he seems to hopefully find a bit of confidence this week. He's really struggled. I'm not sure whether it was a penalty or not. It was a bit dodgy. He seemed to just kick the ball away and just fall on the floor, but I mean, we'll take him at the moment. And Rudiger, that own goal, I mean, just wow. what what was going on there? I mean, you could, could even blame the keeper, I suppose, as well. He's just running out aimlessly and he just passed it in the back of the net. I mean, he's been... He's been out of the team for quite a while as well. So it's good to see him back playing well. It's just a shame about the goal, really, to be honest. Other than that, you can't really say much. It's bottom of the league, Sheffield United. What about you, Ben? What are you saying? Um, yeah, I think we made our own problems, like you say, with the own goal. Um, it was a soft one to concede. And then it puts you in that position where you go into like the last third of the game with a huge pressure to, to get the three points. Um Obviously, we see it out, got the three points. But we just don't need to be doing that. We need to make sure we put the game to bed earlier. We had the chances, so um, we've really got to start doing that. But 
generally on the whole, um, going back and also going back to the Tottenham game on Thursday, I think we're, we're quietly going about our business and cracking on with it and uh, and grinding out their results. Nothing special at all. Nothing special. Um, like you say, it's nice to see a little bit more from Werner, but we're just, we're just taking over and we're, we're we're not in anyone's way. We're just getting on with it. This is what we need to do right now. Yeah, and we're, I think, where are we now? Are we fifth now, Hops? Yeah, a point off top four, which is unbelievable to how bad we yeah. played. So I'm really pleased with that. And I just think, yeah, and we, well, from the struggle we've had over the last month or two, we've uh, we've just cracked on. So it's all about keeping that going, uh, not worrying about what everyone else is doing. Um, and we'll get back up there. I mean, it, you just you, the, the results are going to be a bit scrappy. Um, like, And we know that any team can beat anyone on the day. So I was expecting that uh, Sunday against... Um, Against the blades, I thought they'd, uh, I thought they'd give us a good, good a de- half decent game, and uh, and they did. So fair play to them, and uh, on to the next one. It's it's like we touched on in the last um, episode, Ben. We like, I think it was after the Burnley game, and it weren't anything too impressive, but yeah. it was the result is all that matters at the moment. Like right. like we said, any of them sort of sides from sort of like fifth down to like eleventh, twelfth, they put on a little run of four or five wins on the trot. All of a sudden, you're fucking bang in it. West Ham done it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like they they've, they've won like four out of five or something. Was like got in the top five. You boys have done the same. So I think at the moment it's it's all about results. And like looking at your fixtures upcoming, I think the next two that like you got Newcastle and Southampton. If you if you come out, like you could easily win them, them two, and then all of a sudden you've won five on the bounce. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and you're looking right. a better prospect again. Like, yeah, like yeah. I touched on last week, though, he's he's rotating his players a lot at the moment, which is great. New manager and that, they're going to get a lot of trying to prove himself. But how long does that excitement last? I mean, if, if we start losing a couple of games, people start questioning, going, does he know his best 11? He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know to play in the centre half. He doesn't know his best wingers are. So it's, it's all great and dandy now that everyone's talking so well about, well, not so well about it. We've only beat Sheffield United, but. You just a couple of games, you just got to take every game and just hopefully we, like you say, come out of these next two with six points and start talking about top four again. But I already think it's a bit of a stretch, but we'll just have to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it will be a push, and there's a lot of teams going for it this year. Um, it's a, it's a funny year, there's more, more teams up there, and, and it's, and it's tight as well. Um, I think realistically, we, we can do it, and I'm going to say we'll, we'll grab fourth. Um, like now, uh, but I think the problem we could have coming up in a few weeks is obviously we're still in a, in the Champions League, so we've got Atletico coming up as well. So as much as these these games that we should win going into in the coming weeks, we've really got to kind of do that and also focus on the on the Champions League and the FA Cup as well going forward. So it's going to be it's going to be a busy schedule, um, but busy schedule at a high level, not just Mickey Mouse, you know. And so yeah. We, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. That's when it's really going to kind of start kicking off for us. And we'll see that. I think we'll see the, the true colours of uh, the gaffer then as well. So, look forward what, to it. What do you reckon, Gory? Are you, are you looking over your shoulder now and worrying the form Chelsea seem to be hitting? Chasing you, only a point behind you now. now. Well, yeah, it's not It's not only just them. Like, obviously, as you said, like, you know, there, there, is, there is teams in and around us that they could easily just take us over. Like, if we don't sort ourselves out. But I was just going to ask the question to um, Ben and Chris. Obviously, you got rid of Lamps and he's come in. And what's he had? Two wins and a draw? Uh, Two draws. Uh, three wins. Three, three, wins. three wins. Three wins. Three wins. Yeah. Three wins. Draw with Wolves. He, he, he drew the first game. Yeah, he drew the first. Yeah. So, but do oh. you think he's, do you think Lamps could have done this? Like, do you think he could have done it? It's a yeah, favourable game, wins then, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I don't think, I can't see the change in personnel. I think it's just more, I think Hops has touched on it a couple of times last week and this week, really. They're playing for the manager now and they're, they're playing for, they're placing the team. Um, this, is, this is the thing, once we get another couple of games in, you're going to start seeing the true colours of a lot of players. Maybe ones that aren't really getting in, they're going to start sulking, but... We've got to keep. We've got to keep it going. And and Lampard's gone now. That's it's it's done. And that, that's Chelsea for you all over. I mean, 
I've touched on our ambitions earlier and they are an ambitious club and they, they don't stop. If uh, They're very relentless when it comes to managers and as gutted I am to see the back of Frank, it is what it is and, and on to the next. But I think at the moment it is a bit of a honeymoon and, and it'd be nice to see the true colours. To be honest, I'm gutted to see the back of him and all because I think he's an heap of shit <laughs> and I thought he'd have just fucking nosedived your club. So uh, oh, I was gutted dear. when he got sacked, to be honest. He won it all. <laughs> Not as a fucking manager, he ain't. <laughs> He'll be back. Yeah, will he fuck? He'll be back at Derby next season once Rooney's jump ship. Oh, dear. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that concludes Chelsea anyway, boys. So, um, yeah, on the up, you boys look to be. Talking of on the up, the mighty Leeds against Palace was uh, last night, which brings us over to myself and the mute himself, Mr. Patrick Greenaway down there. He's uh, he's not said a word all fucking podcast, I don't think. I think he's still sulking <laughs> about last night. Hey, I was, um, I was stayed quiet. You'd forget I was here and just missed me out tonight, to be honest. Nah, it's not going to happen, Patty. Don't you worry about that, sunshine. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll basically send it over to you, mate. Thoughts on, on last night, really? Mate, last night was fucking dreadful. Um... I mean, we've played some poor games this season, but that's got to be up there with with one of the worst. And it's just, it's like, I know we've got this awful stat, if Zaha don't play, we basically don't win. And it's like the players know, as soon as he ain't on the pitch, they don't even look interested from the off, offset. Do you know what I mean? And like, against you and then against Newcastle midweek as well, like conceding goals in the first two, three minutes, it's like, they ain't even fucking focused. They're not, their minds ain't on the game. Do you know what I mean? It's, at least against Newcastle the week before, they showed a bit of fight. They showed, you know, got back into the game, played well and went on to win. Yesterday, like, they literally didn't look interested. You, you, it was lucky, we was lucky to keep it to two. Could have easily been four or five nil to you lot. And it wouldn't, that wouldn't have flattered you. Do you know what I mean? Just honestly, mate, we were as useful as Stephen Hawking on a treadmill. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, Pat. Like, obviously, it was against my boys, and f- like look, like trying to look at it from a, a a different point of view. I was trying to sort of watch what you boys were doing as well, and it just seemed like you threw the towel in from pretty much the get go. Like you said, it was, it was almost as if they sort of just didn't fancy it. It was ah, oh, well, we ain't got Wilf today. We're going to lose, aren't we? So we might as well just not bother. And then as soon as we went 1-0 up after the first couple of minutes, that was pretty much the game done. Like, I don't think we did once. What's like, that? Not, we didn't trouble you once. Do you know what I, I mean? To be honest, I don't actually remember you boys having a shot. I, me- I remember like one from distance. I think Townsend from about, Townsend from about think- 30 yards out. But it was just straight down the pipe. It was never going to threaten us. But... Other than that, you, you you weren't a threat. And I noticed in, in the second half even, um, there was a couple of times where we sort of, you you ventured into our half and we tackled your your boys, um, broke broke like on you on the counter-attack. And they actually looked at it on the um, the pundits and that Carragher and that was having a look at it. And Eze was just fucking walking back. And I think RU was doing the same. They just, as soon as they lost the ball, they just, heads down and just walked and it was yeah. there was no like get up and go to sort of fucking hell look we're only a goal behind at the moment let's try and get it back you know what I mean it just seemed as if they didn't fancy it and and to be honest I think 2-0 was quite flattering for you oh yeah mate it, yeah we could have it could have easily easily been doubled out and I mean I didn't I didn't stay tuned to watch the pundit tree there was, there was nothing to keep <laughs> me there to be honest but I mean even during the game like the amount of times we must have given the ball away to you. Like, I've seen us string more passes together on a Sunday league. Like, I don't think they got three passes in a row at any one point in the game. Like, every player was guilty of just giving the ball away all fucking night. And it was just, it's just, it was a shambles. But the only good thing is a few more performances like that. And there's no way Roy's getting a new contract. It's the, it's the only positive I'm seeing in it. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's not great, is it? it like the, the 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 bonus, I suppose. Regardless of these sort of results, you're going to be safe this season because the bottom three are so yeah. far off. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. like you said, every cloud, I suppose, if it means that 
that you could get someone with a bit more more um, adventure in them. Like I, I just got the stats up here in front of me. You, you you made 250 accurate passes compared to our 724. So I mean, so, it's just a like Roy's always been known for his, his you know he's, he's known for his safe football and you know last few years we've been a counter attacking team. But we're not even doing that at the moment. We're not we're not keeping it tight at the back. I think we've had two clean sheets all season. Do you know what okay, I mean? Like yeah. we we don't score a lot, and now we've got one of the worst defenses in the league. It's like you can understand Roy if he's grinding out his one 0 results and you know getting wins and keeping clean sheets. You think, all right, they're not exciting, but there is tactics and they're working. They're not fucking working. Yeah, it's it's not like well. You've conceded more goals than Fulham. You conceded more yeah. goals than Newcastle. It's more awful, goals than shocking. United. You know what I mean? It's it's not great, mate. Yeah, I mean we've had a centre mid playing centre back for the majority of the season, and then for some he was doing all right, but then for some reason he gets dropped from the team, but not even played in centre mid. Like who's that? Push him up. Um, that check to you. Yeah. Oh right, yeah. But, like right, for me dead, personally. No, he's, I'll, I'll rate him, but I'd have him and that Reader World centre mid. Do you mean Kiyote? Uh, Kiyote. Yeah, 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 fucking hell. You, you're on, man. I wonder he's been dropped. He died about <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see Kiyote getting much of a shift in at the moment. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> oh. We haven't seen him. We haven't seen him since. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you do you know your players, bruv? You ain't oh, the only dear. one, Pat. I think that's the that's title of the podcast sorted anyway, lads. Kiyote's <laughs> <laughs> dead. <Alive? laughs> oh, dear. I must admit, though, from, from our point of view, Pat, it's probably the the easiest game we've had all season. Like we, we, We've had some games where we've had some good results and we've dominated games, but it just I've never been so relaxed watching a Leeds game. It just seemed as if it was a training exercise. Yeah. Like, mate. Uh, that, but that's what I'm saying, like, as soon as Zaha's not playing, it's like the players don't bother. Yeah, you know look, I mean? there's, there's just... no sort of coincidence that whenever he's not there, you boys never win. No, it's just not crumble. Even like draws. You, just, you, you lose pretty much every game the man does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a mentality um, thing that uh, throughout the rest of the team. And I think that could be... If, say, Roy goes, they bring a new manager in, in the summer. I think it'll be a great time to get rid of Zaha as well. Because otherwise, yeah. you're just always going to have that always going to have that problem like you know he, he's been great for us and he is an outlet for us but we rely on him far too much that no one else will step up and take 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 that role do you know what I mean whereas if he ain't there and they build a new team around three or four players rather than one then you would hope next season we can be a little bit better or at least be a bit more a bit more <laughs> consistent yeah, look, if you, if you flogged him and got a decent uh, amount of cash anyway, it's probably your last chance to do that. You could probably yeah. reinvest it in a couple of different attacking options anyway to sort of give yourself a bit more depth. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you could easily, you know, say they're going to get 60 mil. You could easily go and buy two, maybe three players for that. Oh, of course you could, yeah. You ain't getting that, though. You Not a chance. Mil, I think though. you'd be lucky to get 30 now. Yeah, fuck, fuck those. We'll so, see. I don't know. But yeah... From like from the lead side of things, I'm sort of over the moon with how it went, and like it seemed. Well, we've now won three out of our last four, and we've well, we've gone into the top half now. We've just gone above Arsenal, <laughs> and with that like that's our next game. That's a that's a massive one. But I seem to think that that we seem to just be growing accustomed to this division now. It looks like we're like we we started the season very much sort of everyone's team that they want to watch because every game was. Like a basketball match, it was end to end, and there was goals going in left, right, and centre. But we seem to have sort of learned the Premier League a bit. We seem to like yesterday. We could have easily gone a bit more mental against you lot and left ourselves open, but we played it more sensibly, and we, we've like cruised to a two nil win. Where earlier on in the season, in that same game, we'd have probably won the game still, but it would have been like five three or something because we were leaving ourselves too open. But I think we sort of. We've, we're improving throughout the division and every game now so I'm seeing changes that we're making. They're only like subtle changes that tactically are being done when we're not committing too much when, when we shouldn't. 
we, we only do it when we know that we can sort of thing. Um, and I think that we're going to like have a, a decent second half of the season. Like the, the two teams that we've sort of played a second time so far are yourselves and Leicester. And you both beat us 4-1 earlier in the season. And we beat Leicester 3-1 and we just beat you 2-0. That sort yeah, of shows yeah. the improvements that we've made throughout the season. Like we're, we're at a different place now. Um, and even defensively, like we, I had a look earlier, we shipped 10 goals or nine goals, sorry, in our first five games. We've only shipped five in the last five. That again, it, we've, we've tightened things up. We've just, we're growing into, into the division. And I, I reckon we can, we can nick a top half finish now, to be honest, the way we're going. Um, but yeah, just, well, it's all dependent on Phillips because he took a knock against you boys. So if he's if he's not injured, I reckon we 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 could be all right for a, a top half finish this season. But um, Strug, what do you reckon, mate? I just wanted to say about um, Palace. They look like I only watched a bit of the game, but I see a bit of the game against Newcastle as well. They just look like a team that's got their feet up already, got a few points on the board early doors, and thanks to the, the bottom three teams being so bad this season, just look like Southampton. Are, Similar, they started off quite well, and they know they're not going to get into Europe. <clears throat> you ain't going to go down. It just seems normally teams start playing like that sort of towards the end of April when it's, it's all sort of done and dusted. But for some reason this this season they started a bit earlier, and it should look like there's no desire to go and win a game, is there? It's, to be honest, if you get two more draws, you're probably going to be mathematically safe this season anyway, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. And I mean, <laughs> against Newcastle. I mean, we started slow. Once we got the equaliser, we actually probably played one of the most entertaining games I've seen us in in a while. And then it was like, you know, coming up against Leeds, you know, on the back of two two wins. Even without Zaha, I thought I felt, you know, we might turn up and give them a game. But as soon as that goal went in, and like you said, the players just don't look interested. It's like they know they're going to be playing Premier League football next year. And you know they yeah, just look not interested at all. Jonesy, what's your um, opinion on it being a, a Palace fan deep down anyway? Since you changed, killing the... you Eagles. No, nah, I'll be honest, yeah, I, 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 I didn't actually watch the whole game, but what a lot of you said, Palace look dog shit. Um, and what you said, you what what I watched of it, I've never seen you look so comfortable in my in in, in all of the the whole season. It was just all too easy for you. Everything was just so easy. I mean, they were gifting you a lot of it. They were just by their poor play, but well, it you, was could, you could see how much so Rafinha easy. was enjoying the space he was getting. He was just he yeah. was doing bits, mate. He was just he was taking the utter piss out of them. And, and just, you and, and just let him do it. You have held your own. I think you are definitely you've more than held your own this year for a first season in there. You are getting better. And I think you're only going to get better, to be fair. So, but yeah, as a, if, for you boys, you should be buzzing. Well, I, I was but looking that... at it. I was looking at it earlier, mate. And our, our next four games, we've got Arsenal, Wolves, Southampton, and Villa, and they're all you can win them all. Of, they're all sort of around us, and they're all winnable. Like, yeah, I think the thing with it is, if we come out of that with sort of eight or nine points out of them four games, all of a sudden, like you're comfortably in the top half. Because they're yeah. the other teams that are sort of battling you for the top half. So all of a sudden, we'll, we'll eat, like, comfortably be in like eighth or ninth position. And then you can start sort of looking upwards. Looking you know at I mean? a couple more I'm up above you, yeah. I'm not thinking because I don't, I think we're, we're, it's too early. And I don't even think <laughs> it good, would be good if we even did get in like to the top six or seven, whatever it is to be in Europe. But it's too soon for a newly promoted club. But if, like I say, if we come out of them four games with, with a decent points haul, you yeah, can yeah. looking up. What gave me a semi it, um, the most out of your game last night? Honestly, when I what it was right at the end, it gave me a lovely little semi. When when you lost the or when they had the chance, or no, you had the chance, didn't you? And then that, and then Palace broke ninety second minute, ninety second minute, two nil up. There was four of your players hunting him down. Yeah, there were there weren't even enough, there weren't even hardly any Palace players up there. No, and I'm thinking. Do you know and what? It, it was on Eze as well. It's I think. lovely and he to just, see. He, he looked over his shoulder and couldn't fucking believe what was happening. So. No, do you know what? As a, as a you know, if that if that was United or whatever, to see your team doing that, it was. It was Leeds United. Minute, when you turn up, the real United. 
it was um <laughs> it would be um oh yeah what a thing to see and I say I'm not even a Leeds fan but I looked at that and I thought you know what fair play fair play to every single one of them who track who, who run back then. But that, yeah, that's, Alioski, Dallas, whatever. That exact yeah, sort of attitude that they showed there is the reason we are where we are. Because man for man, we shouldn't be anywhere near where we are in the in the division. We've got mm-hmm. players that have spent their whole careers in the football league just getting by as sort of like mid table, like half rate championship players, and this man's instilled that sort of drive and belief into them, which is what's getting us through. You know what I mean? And when yeah, we've yeah, added players like right. Rafinha, who have got bags of ability mm-hmm. and then he's given them that attitude as well that's when we're going to start sort of stepping up into becoming the top half Premier League side yeah cool. no no I, yeah fair play mate you say done really well I'll see I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm not a second Leeds fan by the way I can see a few comments being thrown about <laughs> that I'm the new BS <laughs> Greg Greg what do you reckon mate the poor everyone just- I just wanted to um, highlight a few points from the game, really. Like, just um, do you think do you think Palace are playing like that, Pat? Because of obviously what you said about Roy maybe not getting a contract and that. So, and where you are in the table. But before you answer, I just wanted to say as well, like um, the skill from Rafinha was fucking ridiculous. Ended Cahill's career, mate. I think so. I mean, I've. I, I know he turned slow anyway, but I mean, wow. I've, I've, I've not seen a bit of skill like that for a long time, like actually just kill someone. But um, It was and filth, also then, it? I, Yeah, it was... It, I mean, Kyle was talking about semi. I mean, that should have got you a semi, Kyle, not fucking <laughs> someone running back and tackling someone. I but, was um, out working, mate. Sorry, man. <laughs> but um, no, also as well, like, not to go on about Bamford because he, he done his job and scored, but what was that finish as well? He tried. He went with his left foot, and he it was all day a right-footed finish, mate. I, what the fuck was that? You done all the hard work. He I'm, took on that, he, and he done brilliantly to get get in that position. Like he roasted the fellow. Yeah, on the well, obviously. Line. Yeah, it was a short pass, and then he knocked it round Kale again. I mean, he's just. It's he like tried getting a bit cocky, I think. He's tried sort of half trying to knuckle ball that with his left peg. Yeah, I don't know what he was doing, but I just was like, oh wow, that could have been another that could have been that could have been the goal. Even though he's gone on the like and got himself the goal anyway. But yeah, that would that have been a have screamer been and all. If he'd if he'd have finished that off, that would have been some goal, mate. Yeah. But yeah, no, but obviously I asked Pat, like, do you think that because where you are in the league? You're playing like how you are, and maybe the players don't think that Hodgson is going to get the new contract. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a mix of everything. I think yeah, that, I mean they know they're safe, but professional players you should you should want to win every game you turn up in. Do you know what I mean? But I think we've got such an old squad as well, and such a small squad that I think like they're they're, they're tired, but that ain't a fucking excuse. Do you know what I mean? And I think I think they probably don't really buy into Hodgson tactics a lot as well. Like, you've gone and got bought, like, a fair few, like, sort of attacking players recently, but they're not being allowed to, like, express themselves. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. obviously, that um, that new, uh, the new striker. French well better. Better. His touch yeah, he is good, though, Pat, isn't it? <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't get the service. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, he, he did. He did. He served it. it. He served it straight to fucking Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's like give the players a chance and let them attack a little bit. Like, if you're going to go out and lose, go out and lose and get beat by a team that's playing yeah. better football, even though you're giving it a go. Do you know what I mean? Don't just let Leeds literally, like Tell said, like take the piss and fucking make it look fucking easy. Yeah, you you boys completely rolled over, mate. It was, um, I'd, I'd, like like you said, it's, there's a way of losing. And when you lose like that, it just, it hurts, doesn't it? Because it's it giving just, you nothing as a fan. You you lose interest, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, we've now got Burnley on the weekend and you know that's just going to be possibly the worst game of the weekend to watch. Like, two shit teams playing shit football. Right, well, that sort of will bring us, I suppose, to the end of the um, the Leeds Palace chat. Unless anyone else has got anything that they want to put out there in regards to that game or either side. No? All good. Pat, you sure? Yeah, I don't think Pat wants to talk any more about anything. <laughs> I'm good. I've, I've, had, I've had my two minutes for the week. <laughs> He's Roy bashing. 
Back back to his uh, Twitter retweeting naked men on OnlyFans. Cheers <laughs> <laughs> for that. Because I'm, I'm sure me and the boys absolutely love seeing our fucking timeline whenever you, you're on there retweeting. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> follow him on there and I still get him popping up on fucking Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Someone's been <laughs> liking him. Oh, God. Mate, it's, it's, it's a, something I can't have open at work anymore is Twitter. As soon as I'm following Pat, he only needs someone to my boss to walk past or something. He's naked blokes everywhere. Jeez, You're right, Tell. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, all right. Mate, that's why that's why I've been quiet. I've been sitting here retweeting all night. I bet you bloody have yeah, all. As long as it's only retweeting, I can't see your other hand, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, that'll bring episode three to to an end then, boys. I don't know if any of you boys have got anything else you want to say. For this episode no good that sounds good to me well i'll tell you what i don't know if you were just a bit off of off topic matty might have seen it because he's um half a jock and he keeps a bit of an eye on scottish football maybe not this season with celtic's phenomenal year but um sorry about sorry about the other nine <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know if any of you have heard of a guy called bobby bullock he's a um he was a commentator in Scotland and he's been sacked this week for something he said on air. Yeah. And uh, he was he was commentating on the, the Hamilton Academical game. And I'm just going to play a little clip just to see if, if you boys can pick this up. This is what he said and was what got him sacked. I, I hadn't pressed the button. I went to for a job at half time. Excuse me. I turn my language and I've not pressed the wee button on when I come back. So it's apologies to anybody who have not heard me this second half. You're speaking in the vernacular there, probably. Yeah. 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 Apologies if you deem that bad language, yours. Yeah, sorry, it was just a, a wee bit of poop. And uh, I was a wee bit late back over because yeah, it was a. Uh, I had to squeeze quite a bit. Sorry, I'll just change the subject and get back to the match, but I forgot to press my button. <laughs> so basically, so he, went for a yeah, so basically he turned up for the second half eight minutes late and he was the commentator <laughs> on the game. And when he's got back, he's told him that he's gone for a wee jobby and uh, proceeded to just keep digging and digging. Digging. And subsequently, he's lost his job, the poor fella. So, yeah, it's a shout out to Bobby Bullock anyway. He fucking he's brightened my week up. Lost his job doing the jobby. Me next week. He <laughs> <laughs> began the jobby centre, wasn't he? Was he pulling the bullet? bullet Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Bullock. I thought it was someone that Pat's been retweeting. Fucking <laughs> 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 you know, hell! To be fair, probably fucking is. Uh, it's his little boyfriend on the side. Love oh, it. Yeah, I've got I've got him in a feature, giving him some work next week. Oh, God. <laughs> I might have to unfollow you at this rate. Right? I've actually had a look into how I can sort of hide your retweets, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if I can yeah. figure that out, I've fucking mastered it. But yeah, well, that'll be the end of the podcast anyway, boys. That's episode three under our belt. Um, so thank you for everyone who's listening. Make sure you go over to our Twitter and Instagram pages and follow us at only underscore footy underscore fans. And, um, yeah, give us a, a like and subscribe on, on your podcast platform. We're over on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Pocket Casts. Um, and we're currently in the process of being put onto Google Podcasts. But um, it's not gone live as yet. Hopefully, by the time the, the episode goes out, which is tomorrow, um, which is Wednesday, it should be up and running. If not, by the back end of the week, we'll be up on Google Podcasts. Um, and we'll be recording another episode, which will be episode four, which will be going over our predictions and also our baller of the week and donkey of the week for this week's fixtures, um, just in preparation for the weekend's games. So, yeah, thanks for listening, guys, and see you next time. <laughs>